Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, today's ink, I have in sample form, and I believe was actually provided by the wonderful Mysterious Penefactor in a uh, previous care package. It's by Noodlers, and it is the infamous L. Lawrence, which I believe is uh, an homage to... Laurence Olivier. This this ink, uh, I was really looking forward to it because there's a lot going on here that was kind of fascinating. It's it's a very unique color. It's uh, I don't remember if it's supposed to be permanent or semi permanent or what. Uh, the story behind it, uh, I remember reading it when it came out it was rather fascinating. Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot of people really like it. So actually, I was saving it for a while. Uh, I think I only tested it like maybe in January and as soon as I put it in a pen I was like so excited to try it so this is actually one of my freshest tests because it was in these pens maximum eight hours like I was so eager to get started but um, if you're an avid watcher of some of my other reviews I've mentioned this ink in the past and so you might get an idea of what's to come now speaking of pens I use these two. This is a Pilot Plumix, and it just has sort of the standard little stub that comes on it. And this is a Jinhao X450, and I love my X450s because they tend to be pretty broad and pretty wet, and this one is. But I should also say, I heard that this it takes a little bit more effort to clean out, which was why I picked these two pens, because they are very easy to take apart. You can pull out the nib and the feed, I was thankful for that later, uh, but yeah, I wanted to see if I could find some comparable inks. I don't know how I did, <laughs> because this is a pretty unique kind of ink, especially when you consider the qualities it has, because it has some resistance qualities. But anyways, here's L. Lawrence. Here's Noodler's Burma Road Brown, which you can see is uh, kind of similar, but I really wish I could get this on camera. There's a, a strange quality to L. Lawrence that people have described it as looking like dirty motor oil. I'd say that's accurate because there's something about this that just gives off an oily texture. But yeah, uh, and not like in a shiny way. Uh, here's KWZ uh, Iron Galt Gold, which actually has a good bit of green in it. And actually fairly similar, which I found amusing. Géobans Vert Empire, or uh, Empire Green which has absolutely no water resistance whatsoever, so very different in that. And then you can see this has a bit more yellow or gold in it. And Stipula's Musk Green, which definitely has more gold in it than L. Lawrence. And, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know why I included that. Anyways, I don't know, too late now. Yeah, so let's check out the chromatography, because the chromatography is really something else. Now... This is how you're supposed to do it, where you put the line of ink and instantly drop it in the water. And as you might be able to tell, there's a good bit remaining. But do you see those lines, those streaks? Because I, I did this using the Plumix, so I literally just went like this, with the stub nib of the pen. So you can see the lines. And then you see how it's like lumpy? Like it doesn't want to fully move, so you have these little clumpy bits of like dark. And you get sort of bleh color. And then you get this bright yellow up at the top, which actually iridesces under black light, which was fascinating. And then I let it dry. I did another one where I let it dry. Which is not how you're supposed to do it, but, you know. And, uh, you might be able to see there's space in between the ink and the edge of the paper. And that was the really the only way that the water would go up, which is why you have this V down the center. The water couldn't go through whatever this is once it was dry and went around the side and pretty much went like this and dragged this yellow up. But what was interesting was the paper, this filter paper, went like the water absorbed all the way up to here but the yellow stopped where, where it did and I can't explain that but that was interesting. And then, because I knew that this had some resisty qualities, I wanted to see what it could hold up against. And as you can see, water 
really didn't do a whole lot. In fact, the reason why it looks like that was because I just kept scrubbing and I actually scrubbed through the top layer of the paper. Same thing with one third bleach solution. That was me scrubbing through the paper. Ammonia pen flush kind of started to break it up, but I couldn't scrub that much or else it was gonna start to eat through the paper. And hydrogen peroxide kind of got that yellow stuff moving but did nothing else. So when I saw this, I got worried. Now, paper test. Top down in density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. And if you know my reviews, it's always bad when I have two of something. So this is my Sayez paper that uh, was pretty much my standard for testing for a while. And I wasn't getting a lot of shading and things were just kind of weird. And I was getting like near bleed. I don't think it's gonna come through on camera, but I, something felt wrong. I refused to believe that those were the results, so I tested it again, and unfortunately, I got pretty much the same results all over again. So, see that, like, feathering there? And it's not just in the X450. I mean, you do get some shading, but you don't get a lot, and you really have to try, and it's really, I mean, it it's odd. Some, something, something didn't, uh, but yeah, the uh, Plumux took five seconds to dry, the X450 took eight, which I found very bizarre, because it is pretty broad and pretty wet. And uh, we get this. And that's with the bright light coming in this direction. It's not like the light is pushing the image through. That's, uh, that's naturally there. And as you can, that's the X450, but you can still see some of it with that tiny little Plumux. So that's weird. Uh, but yeah, the water test, you can tell that that yellow washed away, you can see hints of it. But whatever that mucky color underneath, that remained very much, that did not blink. So there's that. Next up is Fabriano paper, which is 85 grams per square meter, and tends to be able to handle inks that even Claire Fontaine and Rodia have some trouble with, and that is definitely the case here. This is more along the lines of what I was expecting. and. You can see here you do get some pretty nice shading. It's very attractive. And uh, we don't really get sheen so much as just shine, where it's laid on really thick. This reminds me of like an, like an oil stain, because it's that kind of shiny. But also we had this. So that little stub took 16 seconds to dry, and that X450 took 29 to fully dry. And in fact, the dots, never dried. Because of the trouble I was having with these tests, uh, after I was done writing the last page, I then waited an entire hour for doing the water tests. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no bleed, there's no feather, there's no spread. I don't know what I'd say about echo, I don't, I don't think so, but, um, all right, so let's look at this. Now, you can tell the water, or sorry, the yellow washed away, but the rest is pretty there, but I want you to look at these dots. See how they're yellow? They were still not dry when I did the water tests, so instead of the dots, like every other test, usually being the darkest part of this, they actually washed away the most. And they actually started to push some of that yellow through the back. So that was weird. Next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. And we're back to having a little bit of trouble. Now, we do get some shading on here. We don't get, you know, the, the feathering, really. We do get a little bit of a wooliness where it's laid on thick, and we get the longer dry times. Now, that little stub took 12 seconds, and the X450 took 30, which is worrisome. Now, this is a very saturated ink. There is so much stuff in this ink, it literally feels like you're dealing with motor oil. It is, it, 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 there's something strange about it. If you are unfamiliar with this ink, I don't know how I can convey it. If you are familiar with this ink, I think you'll understand what I mean. But yeah, uh, yeah, I said there's some echo, which is true. And if anything, the quadrilateral paper is helping to hide it because we do get some stuff that's visible. I mean, it's just hints of it, but still, this is Rhodia. This is, 85 gram this is 80 grams per square meter, it's ceramic coated. I would not have expected that, but yeah. Uh, water test, you can see the, the yellow washed away and the rest is pretty there. And once again, the dots kind of, a couple of them, 
See how they're pretty yellow? That one, that one, and this one. Yeah, they uh, they were not fully dry. Now, next up is Tumbleway River Paper, which is known for drawing out dry times. Yep, and shading and sheen, and I knocked my camera because you know. Uh, yeah, that X450 essentially never dried. Like, uh, after I had done all the water tests and I had hung them up and the paper had dried out from the water, it was still shiny in parts to the extent that actually... Uh, I thought I might have smudged onto the page I stacked on top of it, but I can't tell because it's 20-pound paper and it's a mess. Now, that tiny little stub, and you can see, like, there wasn't a ton of ink coming out of that because that smear is not huge. It took 23 seconds to dry. And, I mean, it, it has this really interesting shading. You know, it's really shiny. Uh, it's a fascinating color. O honestly, th this color reminds me of grease paint. Uh, like, uh, camouflage grease paint. Or, uh, if you're a fan of the show Arrow, you'll know what I'm saying. But, yeah, this looks like grease paint. It's kind of that dirty army green. And it's kind of greasy looking, so there's that. But, yeah, the dry times are just enormous. But it is Tomoe River. It doesn't do the bleed feather spread thing. There is some echo because this ink is fairly dark and this paper is quite thin and when I was laying it on pretty thick trying to make sure I could get some shine for the camera yellow came through the back which is weird, but yeah now, like I said usually the dots are the darkest part you know, of these tests, they remain the most but since they refuse to dry this is exactly what I meant on that last test see how they're completely yellow and pretty gone? because they just never dried and they washed away. Now, even this started to break apart a bit. I hope you can see that. See the texture there? Even this started to break apart because it just wouldn't dry. I gave it an hour. Ugh. Now for the next three tests, I just used the little stub on the Plumix, uh, except to write the name. This is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper, but it wasn't as bad as it usually is. We do have some spread. The line width did increase a bit, uh, but not obscenely. I say there's still some sheen, but I, or sorry, shading, but I went over that a second time, so I don't know if naturally there'd be shading. It's very opaque. Uh, we do get some feathering, but not a ton. Really not a whole lot. Two and a half seconds to dry. Not, not a whole lot, and it's not the kind that jumps out at you. And then there's this, which is, uh, I sort of don't know what to make of this. There are a lot of spots that start to get dark, but they never came all the way through. So there's that, which is interesting. Now, more absorbent papers tend to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out, and that's definitely, definitely the case here, because even the yellow, it, it's so light the camera doesn't want to pick it up. Even the yellow is resisting being washed off. But yeah, uh, if you had to recover that, you absolutely could. Next up is Me Notebook Paper, which is thinner than 20 pound. It's very cheap. It's common for American school children. Here, now lately this, this paper has been feathering. And even still, it didn't feather as much as it has been lately. Okay, not the X450. That's, that's asking a lot. But the rest is pretty okay. You do get a little bit of shading. One and a half seconds to dry. It's really not so bad. And you do get some echo, but you get no bleed. Even in the scrubby. Now that S, that was me scratching the page and going over it twice. But look, even here in the X450, we get, we get this hazy darkness, but it never came all the way through, which is encouraging. So, you know. And then... This paper tends to freak out when you add water. Here, the texture freaked out. I wish I could explain how that feels, but yeah. No, it's it's very clear, very there. Even the yellow, you can kind of see it there. Doesn't want to let go, doesn't want to wash away. Didn't feather, didn't explode. Very there, very recoverable. Now, lastly is moleskin notebook paper, which I hate because it hates ink. And it took nine seconds to dry, which I can't explain because obviously this is pretty absorbent paper. And I want you to look at this word, sum, and shading. Here we get feathering. We probably get more feathering on here than we did anywhere else. 
which is just bizarre. We do get a bit of uh, shading, but I don't know if it's worth it because we also get this. And I really wish the camera would be able to pick this up. Do you see that, those dots right at the center? We actually get those all over the place. And that's kind of maddening, because it's not just pushing the yellow through, which is odd. And then look at this water test. First of all, it kind of dyed the page, which it doesn't normally do. And it got really kind of, like it started to break apart, so it got kind of lumpy and hazy and weird, so I don't know. but. I hate this paper, but anyways, uh, there you go. There's Noodler's L. Lawrence. Uh, yeah, it must, whatever, go away. Uh, it, this was probably one of the hardest inks to clean out of my pens, which made me incredibly grateful that I intentionally chose pens that are easy to crack open. Um, yeah, look, see how thick this is? See how dense it is? And it, it has an almost like oily texture to it. Uh, I really like the color. I liked the way it looked on some of the nicer papers like Fabriano and Tomoe River. However, the dry times made me realize that I do not have the patience of a saint. Uh, so, shocker, right? Anyway, so yeah, be careful with it. But uh, I don't know, give it a try. Maybe I had a bum sample. But judging by some of the things that I've heard from other people, I'm guessing maybe not entirely bum sample. Fascinating color. Probably a fascinating story behind it. I remember there being it, but I don't remember what it is at the moment. Anyways, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.